Hello, and welcome to STEM Stories with Mr. Ewing. Today we're going to talk about animal adaptations, things that animals do or have evolved over time to do that help them survive in their surroundings or habitats. Now, there are three major types of animal adaptations. There's the body part adaptations, body covering adaptations, and behavior adaptations. And we're going to talk about examples of all this. But what does that all mean? It just means that it's different things that animals either do or their species has evolved over time um, that has, they've developed outer uh, behaviors or coverings that actually help them survive in their surroundings, whether they're predator or that they're prey. Um, predator protecting them as they try to find their prey and prey protecting them actually from predators, but also other things that help them survive in the conditions of the habitats they live. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is body part adaptation. What have different species done um, animals done to change uh, their behavior or something that their be their bodies actually do to help them survive. A really good example of this is the pelican. If you look at the, the shape of the pelican's beak, it's almost designed like a net. So when it dives into the water and scoops down, it's able to catch fish much easier, allowing them to eat more. Another uh, adaptation, body adaptation, is the nose of the anteater, or the mouth, or the snout of the anteater, that allows it to get down into those ant colony, or the ant holes, and actually work its tongue to actually eat a lot more food. Uh, another ad body adaptation is the armadillo, and it has a covering a lot that people refer to it as the armadillo's uh, armor. It's a, a very hard uh, outer shell that protects it from being eaten by predators um, and also protects it from the temperature of the habitats in which it lives. Another adaptation is if you look at the hawk, the shape of its beak and its talons uh, allow it to be a much stronger and swifter predator in scooping down and grabbing its prey very quickly um, because a lot of its prey moves just as quickly as the hawk, but the hawk actually is faster. So if we then move on to some body covering uh, adaptations, and if you think of body covering, it's a lot like our skin. Um, of our body or well it is our skin is our body covering but animals um, have adapted different body coverings as a way of protection or hiding uh, if you look at the um, tree bark moth you almost can't see it uh, remember another way to look at uh, body coverings are a way of camouflaging, hiding uh, in its surrounding. And it's, you almost can't even see it. You have to look so hard. Um, another is um, the cheetah out in the grasslands protecting itself so that the coloring will blend into its surroundings. Um, the uh, frogs are actually, or toads tend to do a lot of this. A lot of the things that we find in especially the tempered forest uh, habitats do a lot of camouflaging to blend in. It's how they survive. Um, if I'm walking through the forest, I'm pretty sure I could walk by a hundred of these and not even notice. Um, here's another example of body coverings, the infamous zebra. But the zebra stripes actually help it blend in in its habitat so it isn't so obvious as if it was standing out in a field where there was nothing for it to hide behind. And then again, here's another frog um, blending into its environment. Again, you almost can't see it. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And even in our ocean habitats, um, we've got uh, some creatures, sea creatures, um, I believe this is an octopus. Um, you basically, I mean, it'd be really tough to see this. If you were a diver, you may swim by it. And if you were a predator, um, you may not even see him or her hiding. So now what does it mean when we talk about behavior adaptations? And this is a little bit uh, harder to see, 
because body coverings is obvious, you know, you when they're blending in, it's it's easy to see. But if we talk about um, body or behavior adaptations, a good example of this is the puffer fish, normal looking or normal looking fish until it feels threatened, and then it actually inflates its body to become bigger and scarier and to ward off its prey um, to protect itself. Um, another behavior adaptation talking about fish is fish tend to swim in schools, consider a school a big group of fish, uh, adding to that protective layer. That way if a predator is coming in, it doesn't quite know where to go and where to attack and it's kind of confusing. Um, one of the cool things I love about the possum uh, is it has a behavior adaptation of what we call playing dead. Now, I'm going to show you a picture and I'm just going to let you know the, the possum's not dead. But when it feels threatened or it feels in danger, it basically lays down on the ground and acts like it is dead because animals in the natural world don't want to eat if they're not accustomed to it. Uh, say like a vulture eats a dead animal, a lot of uh, other animals won't eat prey that, or their prey that's already dead. They want it to be fresh. So a possum does this play dead trick where it actually falls over and pretends like it's dead and a lot of times it'll be left alone. Um, so I want you to do some thinking or research or what other animals can you think of that use adaptations for survival? Do our dogs and our cats in our houses do anything to um, change or ad have they adapted over uh, centuries of time to uh, adapt to their habitats? And what are the animals around in our neighborhoods or in the habitats that we live that do this to, you know, have they changed their uh, body coverings? Have they changed the behavior adaptations? Um, do they have body part adaptations? Look around. Um, next time you're, uh, if you get the chance to go to a zoo, look through the different um, exhibits and look at the animals that are there and try to figure out what adaptations they have actually made for their survival here on Earth. So, and think about what things have humans done to adapt to our habitats. We've done a lot of other things, um, but a little bit different than the animals around us. But it's kind of a good conversation, and I look forward to talking with you.